regard to uh, resilience and distribution. I suppose what we come to next is uh, more in terms of implementation um, and uh, the way in which things uh, are distributed. Um, oh, and in, uh, <coughs> I suppose, uh, some relation to the client server um, and some of the um, aspects of, of say, middleware um, and those types of implementation. I suppose we should mention uh, hearkening back to uh, the Clark Wilson model, um, the uh, uh, aspects of that that relate to the relational uh, database model, and, and some issues there. So just um, uh, remember some of those concepts. Um, the various ways um, that we are implementing distribution, um, the, uh, well, the object, uh, object-oriented programming these days and the, uh, messaging, and, and messaging uh, sometimes is just passing information, but very, very often is requesting functions, invoking functions. Um, uh, in uh, ordinary procedural terms. So um, the, the messaging in, in object-oriented programming uh, and uh, the object model and, and messaging is uh, so much a part of, of so much these days. Um, uh, as mentioned not too many uh, sessions ago, um, the fact that uh, Windows implements um, uh, so many of its its accesses uh, through uh, a messaging model. Um, any window being able to send a message to any window, and that message can be an invocation of a function. And and so the fact that there is no uh, reference monitor uh, uh, mediating the access control to uh, functions in in that regard um, uh, now uh, a more standard uh, way to look at that of course is for remote procedure calls um, and uh, the way that those are managed the the access control that may be um, in, involved with that, but with the object model, of course, we have the common object request broker architecture, COBRA, um, that, uh, well, as, as I said, in regard to the reference monitor, can be our uh, concept of a reference monitor um, implemented on a, uh, a network basis. Uh, and, and so we have uh, uh, additional uh, types of implementation for, for distributed uh, uh, programming, uh, distributed systems, and, and so on and so forth. And eventually, of course, we get, get to the idea of cloud. Uh, and uh, as I say, cloud uh, should be seen as an acronym standing for could lose our under drawers um, an awful lot of people just assume that cloud somehow provides security and it can if that is part of the uh, service provision by the the vendor um, but it is not necessarily you know a cloud really honestly just stands for somebody else's computer it does not um, necessarily make it more insecure but it does not make it necessarily any more secure and whatever types of security the uh, the vendor is providing you have to know and you have to you know if that matches what you need fine if it does not match what you need and, and you know very often that is not going to be a perfect match then yeah um, you have to 
ensure that you provide additional uh, security for your specific requirements. Um, and when we, uh, you know, if from the, the cloud and, and the fact that it is, um, you know, uh, fairly undefined, uh, we get into issues like the, the Internet of Things. And unfortunately, that's very undefined because uh, a lot of people are connecting uh, devices that uh, uh, very often just should not be connected at all. So we need to uh, determine uh, what the, the needs are, the requirements, and, and whether or not something has been internet enabled that never should have been internet enabled uh, in the first place. Um, there are always the uh, erotic devices that make very bad examples for this, but uh, somebody um, built a, um, a, a sniper scope for a rifle, you know, uh, that is internet connected and it, it states in the documentation do not use while it's connected to the internet um this is um i i mean they they had a purpose in doing it and that was the fact that you could um upload uh updates to uh the firmware for this scope very complicated device uh which uh, provided for windage and, and all kinds of uh, situations. But um, it, uh, uh, when, when you did connect it, people found that you, you were able to um, reset settings on the scope itself over the internet while the person was firing the rifle and, and therefore um, making it... Uh, well, miss the, the target it, it was aimed at and, and uh, in some cases hit something that was not particularly aimed at. So, um, the, you know, again, with the cloud, with the, uh, the Internet of Things, uh, as we mentioned before, where is the security perimeter these days? Um, we uh, are also looking at um, issues of embedded computing and in a sense, you know, this is very close to the Internet of Things um, What to what do we have in terms of uh, devices mechanisms? Um, that uh, can be connected can be uh, attacked um, Extend your attack surface in a variety of different ways um, and uh, You know I, What's what is uh, computing power? What what is the device these days? Uh, many many things are are uh, smart devices, and we have industrial control systems and uh, an interesting situation where for years um, people have depended on security by obscurity uh, for these types of issues, these types of devices. Um, and, and so, you know, have we got any uh, issues of, uh, uh, of security that are unaddressed? And, and very often that is the case. Um, edge computing uh, is an, another issue here that, that, you know, we are using our smaller devices, our, our networked devices uh, for some uh, central business activities and and yet you know is your phone or even your watch sufficiently protected when we are using it for important business uh materials so you know all kinds of uh issues in in those regards and and we need to ensure that we know what is happening <laughs>